what's going on everybody this is cody from mprail.com uh going to be redoing the part one tutorial that i did on uh, any rail i kind of rewatched that and realized i was kind of blabbing about my layout and not necessarily talking about any rail six so let's go ahead and take a kind of a quick look at any rail six uh, this is just going to be kind of a basic um, part one tutorial of uh, some of the options and kind of laying your track copying pasting just simple stuff if you already know how to do this you know go ahead and <laughs> move on to another video or something like that uh, but hopefully this will kind of help a few people uh, if you have questions definitely post them down in the comments below uh, or you can shoot me an email if you want uh, or hit me up on discord so that's where i'm typically at when i'm not working on stuff so uh, I guess just taking a quick look at uh, AnyRail. Uh, it's basically like Microsoft Office or Excel if you've ever used those. It's got the ribbons up at the top with a bunch of information, tabs, check boxes, all kinds of great stuff. I haven't really used necessarily everything on here, like 3D Viewer, um, you know, quite a few other options and whatnot. Um, but as far as some of the things that are nice, the layers, uh, I really like the layers. Uh, you can use this to... Um, you know, kind of add in, you know, some layers. Say you've got like, you know, track, like main track, uh, siding. Um, if you've got like building stuff like that, you can kind of add uh, all of that stuff kind of in here. And then as you kind of go into your, you know, objects here, uh, you can go to the object library, click on Walters. I actually like the user objects better. Uh, you download that, let that run for a little while. Um, and you'll actually get a ton more buildings. As you can see, it's kind of delayed when it comes to loading it, but, uh, you know, let's just add this one. So we've added the sawmill, but that should be on the buildings layer. So if you go to the, you know, you'll see the little green bar, it says tools, objects, and you'll see where it says layers, buildings. So now if I were to go to the siding, let's say, go back to track libraries, I'm just going to click on Walter's code 83 which if this were closed and i click on walters code 83 then you'll see the track pop up it'd be the same thing for the atlas if you're using atlas code 83 track it'll pop up so you know now you can add track piece in there super quick super easy i really like you know kind of how this works and if i needed to change this and say oops yeah, i need that to be on track one you know is my main track then it'll be on there. The cool thing with this is, is you can click the little light bulbs and that'll turn off whatever's in that layer. So, um, say we're on the siding layer for whatever reason, working on that and you want to turn off the mainline track. Well, you can do that. So that buildings, all that stuff. So it's really, really cool. It's very helpful. Uh, I really like the layers using the layers, uh, at least, um, some of the things to look out for, uh, if you go to file and then go to options, uh, you can actually add track libraries in here. So if you don't, maybe you don't see a certain library that you're wanting to build like Gscale or standard gauge or one-to-one -one or, you know, anything like that, you can come here and set that same thing with the colors. If you want to change those, you have a hard time seeing some certain color, you can come in here and change it. Uh, your text, you can kind of update, uh, part numbers, labels, uh, percentages, heights, all that kind of stuff. You can actually set a certain font if you want. Uh, the user objects, this is just going to be the folder, I guess, that your uh, user objects that you download, which is pretty much all of these over here. Uh, that folder that will store all of that stuff. So uh, you can just highlight one thing, hit delete, or, you know, highlight multiple things, hit delete, and get rid of stuff. So um, that's kind of the basic stuff, just kind of clicking around real quick. There's other tabs on here. The show tab basically is you check things on this list. It'll show certain things. Um, you uncheck them. It'll not show those things. Um, the insert, you can basically add a line to kind of like add maybe like a dividing wall or the surface will be kind of like your bench work or your tabletop. Um, you, know, you can add rectangles. I use those a good bit for if I'm going to do like a custom building and I know the custom building is going to be 12 inches long by you know, six inches deep um, then you know I can basically come in here say it's 12 long by let's just say three deep click add rectangle click and there's your 12 inches by three inches uh, 12 inch by three inch building so you can do a lot of cool stuff like that 
uh, with the insert. Same kind of goes with the uh, circle. You can add a radius. The ruler is nice because you can actually put this down to measure the distance between, you know, one box to the next. Uh, it's actually kind of nice to use. Uh, text tool, that's pretty much just putting text down so you can like label certain areas, buildings, you know, furniture in your room, the, you know, kind of be able to work around it and all that. Track libraries, that's pretty much all your track and everything. I showed that a little bit ago. Uh, object libraries, this is going to be pretty much all the objects and stuff um, that come with the software. Um, not a ton of stuff here. The user objects, I feel like, is kind of kind of where it's at in a way because um, there's just tons more buildings and stuff. Uh, I use a lot of the Walters building kits, um, stuff like that, or am going to, I should say. I haven't really started that much yet. Um, but use a lot of these so far. I've bought a lot of those to go on the layout, so that's that's kind of nice. Uh, when you go to download the items, um, this viewer is... Whoops. Viewer, let me just get rid of that. Put the... Uh, well, I guess you have to click load at the bottom, but... This thing will just go and go and go and go and go. It'll download pretty much everything. All this stuff's pretty much already downloaded. Um, you have to click download new items and just let that run for a good bit. Um, it takes a hot minute or more for that to uh, kind of fully download all the items. But once you get them downloaded, it's kind of nice to have uh, for like buildings to reference and everything like that. The settings tabs, probably one of the more important ones. I feel like uh, you can set kind of your minimum Radius, if you want just one minimum radius, then you can set just that, put zeros in the others. Um, you know, if you want all three, say you want to have, you know, certain flex throughout your layout or something like that, or certain radius, I guess, throughout your layout, then you can set that so you've got multiple um, radii. I use snap to grid typically. Sometimes you can turn it off to kind of get things a little more precise if you need to. Um, the length and width is pretty much like the actual like layout uh, itself. Um, and that's kind of the basic stuff, guys. Um, as far as any rail, I know I probably just blasted through that super fast. One other cool thing I want to show uh, is just kind of a basic thing is knowing that you can export your file. Um, so you can export when you get your track plan, you're working on it, or you've got it laid out and you're done, you want to show it off. You can save it as a picture if you want, a PNG. You can also do a 3D file if you've got it built out to be 3D. Um, I haven't really played with the 3D stuff, so I probably won't be covering much of that, if any of it. Um, I might take a look at Train Player. Uh, I have just bought that. I've been able to export one of my layouts in it uh, to Train Player or for Train Player and was able to import it over there and kind of run some trains and stuff. It kind of gave me... It actually kind of helped me a little bit more um, to see kind of what was going on, what I could fit, you know, how many cars, all that kind of stuff. So, and then the JMRI layout file, that's probably going to export like something for the, yeah, for the panel pro. Um, and then you can just use that to set up switches and all that kind of stuff to kind of run your, your track layout. But that's pretty much it as far as any rail six. I mean, it's, it's uh pretty basic uh it's nothing really too crazy in depth but you can definitely get very in depth with it um the other thing that i do like about this is the list of materials you can click on this and when you actually add track or as you add track and buildings and stuff like that it'll list everything out so when you get your layout built and you know it's 15 feet or you know five feet long by you know a foot deep and you're doing a switching layout or something like that you can actually click on this and see all the flex track the, how much flex track you need switches everything like that so pretty cool tool that you can use to kind of figure out and give you a, a shopping list essentially to go to the hobby store and kind of go buy what you need so uh, but this this is it for the part one video so i'll continue uh, these tutorials and do some more here later um, but if you guys like this, definitely give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have questions or if you have uh, any kind of feedback or anything, definitely leave that stuff below. Uh, check out mprail.com uh, to kind of keep up to date with uh, my, you know, rolling stock. If you want to check it out, uh, locomotives and any kind of blog posts that I do uh, concerning the layout and everything like that. So we'll, uh, we'll see you on the part two video and we'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Oh.